Welcome to Land of House, I'm Seth. I do a lot of testing with hydraulic ram pumps, such as this one right here. This is a water pump that requires no fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. So typically, if you're using the smallest ram pump, you're concerned about the amount of water that is required to operate the pump, and probably a low head pressure as well. So in this case, I'm gonna be doing a test. What is the lowest head pressure or drop in water that will run a half inch pump? So the setup is, I've got the half inch pump down there and I've got a garden hose going up the hill. We can drag that back down if we need to. And so we've got 40 foot of half inch drive pipe, which comes up to a bucket. And I've got a float valve in here, which will keep our water level consistent. And that's what we're gonna use as our head pressure. So whenever it's a source like this, it's actually hydrostatic pressure. So I'm gonna walk down here and see how much pressure we have got to work with. Okay, to find out how much head pressure we're working with, I'm going to disconnect the drive pipe real quick. I'm gonna turn the water back on, let it flow out of my pipe. Oops, I probably should go open that valve over there. Okay, there's our water. So. In order to determine how high our head pressure is, I'm going to lift this up and wherever the water stops flowing will be our head pressure value. Okay, we've got 20 inches right there. Let's see if 20 inch is enough to get this pump running. Typically, I recommend that people use anywhere from three feet on to get a pump going. But let's see how we do with only 20 inches. Okay, opening the valve. So 20 inches is not quite enough to get this pump going. You'll see that the valve doesn't want to close. And that's because there's not enough head pressure pushing the water strong enough to close that valve. So what can we do? You can actually tilt the waste valve over to the side. Yeah. Turn the pressure tank back upright. Move this like that. So now there is less force required to close that valve because it is already partially swung closed already. So let's see if we can get this to operate now. Oops, I got a leak here in my... I think I've pinched my O-ring here. Yep. Okay, nice. So. It should start on its own now, but that will greatly reduce the efficiency out. So we now know that we are working with 20 inches of head pressure. Let's see if we can go lower. I just scooted the pump further up the hill. Let's go ahead and remove this again and find out what our new head pressure value is. All right, that's about 10 inches. I don't think this is gonna work, but we'll give it a try. All right, it is very, very slowly cycling. And as you can guess, it is requiring a lot more water to operate. Let's drop it down about two inches. So that is approximately one foot of input head pressure. Let's cut the valve way to the side. And it is functioning, but just barely. If I were to let the pump run like this, it would probably get a height of somewhere around six feet or so up this hill. So you're looking at about right here is how high it would lift. Not very much. I just opened up the delivery pipe right here, which goes along this garden hose and on up the hill. So 
I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes and we will see how high this one foot of input head pressure with a tilted waste valve will lift. My assumption is about even with this stick right here. So let's find out. After several minutes, I moved it from right here where it had a foot back down to 20 inches because it was taking far too long. So uh, it had made it up to about right here, which was uh, taking forever. So I've moved the hose down to this point here, 20 inches of head pressure, should be able to lift water here. So I will let it sit there for a while and we'll get some output. I've let this pump for 30 minutes and I think it has almost filled this garden hose up here to about the six to seven foot mark. I can hear it, it's somewhere right around here. So we've got about a foot more to go. Definitely not pumping very fast. My pump down in the creek over here has seven foot of head pressure and is pumping about a quarter gallon a minute past the house up here on the hill. So having the check valve totally upright makes an enormous difference in the efficiency of the pump. So in a minute, whenever this is done, I will actually lift up our bucket to another foot and we will see what it's like to have closer to three feet of head pressure and we'll be able to tilt the valve up and you'll see the difference in the output. Okay, it's quite comical. All of that, about 45 minutes to get uh, this kind of flow rate here. Just a little trickle. So let's increase the amount of head pressure by about, uh, oh, six inches or so. And we'll turn the valve upright, hopefully. And that right there should be significantly improved at this height. Let's see if the lift I just gave it is enough to get this upright here. Not quite. Let me add a little bit more lift on that head pressure. The bucket was right here and now it is right there. So that's a lift of about a foot. And let's see if that makes much of a difference down here at the pump. I anticipate that it will operate now with regular valve placement. And it's very close. I now have the valve just slightly off to the side and that seems to be doing the trick. It's hammering a lot stronger than it was before. Let's take a look at our output. Almost twice the output. I know it's hard to tell from here, but that is a good bit more. So what is the point of all of this? Well, someone asked me, what is the minimum input head pressure you can have for the half inch pump? And pretty much all the pumps are the same. It's just gonna require more water to run bigger pumps. But I would not go anything less than about two feet. So you can see that the pump will work on about one foot of head pressure, but it's not gonna give you much output at all at the six to seven foot mark up here. So that being the case, if you have about two feet of head pressure, you can lift well at seven foot. If you have three feet, then you're looking more like the 15 to 16 foot of lift and having a pretty good flow rate. So anyway, I uh, hope that answers your questions. Definitely, um, I recommend three feet. Two feet is the bare minimum for your head pressure. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.